Glad to be here this afternoon. Glad to see so many folks interested in the uh, Northeast Farm Tour. Um, introduce myself, I'm Mark Rosenberg uh, uh, with STSU Extension out of Aberdeen uh, Regional Center and uh, uh, along with uh, agronomy duties, I guess they also have some, uh, some weed field specialist duties that uh, help me get out and see some fo uh, folks in this kind of capacity. Um, just before I do get going, I do want to recognize uh, some folks that are uh, on the wagon or driving the tractor here today. Dave Voss uh, is one of our technicians for the weed program out of SDSU and Jill Alms back there at the hand raised. Uh, she's also a technician and Daryl Denicky is uh, our IPM coordinator off campus as well. So they're kind of a team that gets these kind of projects uh, and test plots all put together. Um, do want to, probably going to run through a number of different things here as we uh, run through the afternoon, but I also want to invite you to ask questions uh, for uh, things that might be pertain to your farm or for your business. Um, we have a number of different things that we want to look at, so I'm going to kind of move right along with some of these, uh, some of the things uh, that we've got out here in the field. Um, just beginning here, with uh, some new product um, that's going to be, I need to turn my page. Ah, there we go. Um, that is uh, going to be uh, something you'll see on the market here in the very near future. So we've got a few, uh, few um, strips that are laid out here of a new product called Raz. Uh, this actually is a tank mix of Everest and Starine, and it was applied on June 7th. Uh, its main uh, active, mode of activity or the main uh, reason you'd use it is because it does give some pretty good uh, control on wild oats, some of our foxtail. Uh, we will see some control as far as kochia and mustard is concerned, but basically it is used for uh, grass herbicide. Um, it is also, this, these are post treatments, uh, so the green that's on our signs that, as we go through uh, if you see a color green, that is a post-emergence application. Post application. And as you can see down here on our first one, this RAS is at seven fluid ounces. Uh, we've also got some uh, um, surfactant that's added into it. Um, if you look at uh, the next one, RAS, it's got an interlock, which is just a surfactant that's added into it at four ounces uh, per acre. Again, uh, we've got some RAS here at seven ounces with Infinity. Infinity is a Harmony and uh, Express. Uh, tank mix or premix that we could put in, uh, broaden up the control a little bit, especially if we've got any candida thistle or any perennials or anything like that that might be in it. If you look through these uh, three particular uh, tests, they're pretty clean. Uh, not a lot of weed pressure of any kind in there, whether it's broadleaf or grass. Uh, so that might be one that uh, you know would be out here on the market here in the, in the near future. Um, the, t the check. I think is a little further up here, so it's not as convenient as we'd like it. Uh, all the subsequent ones here are just uh, ones that we are, uh, we're not uh, showing today, but uh, we'll be uh, uh, using those numbers for some evaluations later on. But as you go up here, you'll see a check, and uh, you can kind of see that, uh, you know, there was some pressure in there with some uh, mustard and those kind of problems that were in here. But this is just some new chemistry we just want to highlight to you this afternoon. We'll move on down to the, to the next part of the plot. I said we check for that last uh, patch that we had. Uh, you know, it's relatively clean, but we still have some, uh, some broad leaves in here that we would pick up if we could, uh, could come in and look a little closer. So it does a pretty good job of uh, taking care of that particular, uh, the broad leaves that, and grasses that we might pick up uh, for, if we if, uh, use that particular product. Um, the next uh, one that we want to look at here is, um, this is evaluating tank mix partners. Uh, basically we've got just a handful of them here. We don't have quite everything that's on the list. But if we look in the check here, we've got a number of different uh, uh, broad leaves to pick up a little bit of uh, Canada thistle and also some ragweed and that kind of thing. Uh, the treatments that were made here in this particular study, uh, and these are all post treatments, uh, was made on June 13th and the wheat was jointing at the time that, the, that, was, out, that was made. The two we'll highlight right here uh, with this particular uh, 
part of the tour is with uh, Gold Star or Gold Sky at a pint, and then we've got an activator and ammonium sulfates uh, that would be with it. The Gold Sky um, that is a MCPA uh, Starrain and Powerflex. So we can see that if we look in here, we can see some pretty good uh, uh, clean wheat as far as getting rid of that. Uh, the other thing is here, we threw some ester in here at 8.7 ounces. Um, one of the things I stress with you uh, with this particular one is if we had some poor weather conditions during the course of the growing season, you know, like we had some pretty good uh, cold stress during the course of uh, the spring this year. Sometimes if we have tank mixes and we throw this, uh, the ester in there, that kind of thing, we can see uh, the gold sky, we can see some uh, yellowing, some stressing and that kind of stuff that'll show up. Uh, usually that lightens up within a two week period. We don't typically keep that around for a long stretch of time. Uh, but we can have that if we do get into those settings like that. But these are just some things as far as a couple of products that uh, you, know, you can consider uh, as far as uh, post treatments to take out uh, a number of different uh, wild oats, grasses, uh, some limits on broadleafs and that kind of stuff. So Gold Sky and then uh, Gold Sky with 2,4-D ester. <clears throat> this is just a continuation of what we just talked about down there. This is just some additional ones uh, that we've got in the study here. Um, this Everest at 2.0 at uh, one ounce, along with a wide match uh, at 16 ounces. And then we've got some adjuvants and uh, uh, some additives that we throw in with that tank mix. Um, basically, uh, this is going to do good on cheat grass, fox steel, barnyard grass. Uh, sometimes we can see some temporary chlorosis or some yellowing occur when we've got that tank mix going here. Um, but probably if we're looking at crop safety as an issue, this one tank mix does a pretty nice job. Probably one of the better ones as far as crop safety is concerned. Um, and it does a fairly good job on keeping uh, those particular weeds uh, that we might be looking at. Uh, Husky. Uh, that is uh, Express and also uh, Bromoxenil um, and, and uh, Harness. Is that right, Daryl? I guess I can't remember. I think that's Harness or Harmony, excuse me. That's Harmony in there. So um, that one we can, uh, you know, look as far as some, maybe some other tough, tougher uh, broadleaf problems that we might run into with this one. Uh, but um, we have to watch our rates on the Husky. Sometimes we don't want to exceed that. Uh, uh, so we're using a pretty high rate uh, in, in that particular tank mix or that particular product that we're using. And then uh, we've also got uh, Axial down here. Uh, Axial is uh, uh, Express and, uh, uh, excuse me a second once. I think I got that mixed up from the last one. Uh, this actually is the Harmony and the Express as far as the Axial. Starring, of course, is the kochia and that kind of thing. Uh, uh, if we've got some problems, considering uh, some of those problems. And then the affinity uh, mustard and pigweed and wild buckwheat are some of the ones that we could look at. So um, just one of the things that uh, if we can tank mix some of these, so we get some pretty good, uh, um, you know, we kind of look at for some antagonisms with these mixes. Uh, but this year, being the way the weather went, we don't see near as much. So I probably haven't mentioned that quite as much as uh, we'd, we'd maybe hope to with it. Most of these tank mixes, you know, look pretty good and pretty clean as far as, uh, as some of the uh, uh, weeds and that kind of stuff. So really probably more the issue what we're looking at here. So any questions on that last little bit as far as tank mixes and some of the problems you might be having uh, in your wheats? Got a few, apparently everybody got pretty clean wheat this year. Okay, well, we'll move on to the next uh, next little bit here. A wheat project that we were looking at. Uh, this is basically broadleaf control. You know, what, what products are gonna be good as far as taking care of uh, some of those problems. Mustard in particular, if you look at the check that uh, we just passed here, there's quite a bit of mustard uh, uh, popping up in the canopy and that kind of thing. So uh, one of the uh, ones we wanted to highlight too that we uh, pulled out is, first of all, the uh, Husky. 
which we talked about earlier. This was applied at uh, 13 and a half ounces uh, ammonium sulfate and an ion, ion ionic surfactant added into it. As you can see, fairly relatively clean, not a lot in there. Uh, we've got wide match right next to it at a pint, and then we threw some MCPA ester at a half a pint in there. Uh, the wide match is Stinger, Starane, and uh, that is good uh, against you know most of our just annual leaves, but we can also take out some pretty tough ones like biennial wormwood. Uh, some thistles and that kind of stuff might be something that we could look at if we got a little broader spectrum of control uh, from this particular uh, um, tank mix that we're using. Affinity, uh, TM, that's Harmony and Express. Uh, we can use that as far as taking out some of the mustards and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, we also probably want to use some tank mixes that make a little broader, uh, uh, give it a little broader uh, control if we can mix in. Here we use some star rain at a third of a pint in order to get some control. Uh, Wolverine, um, just tank mix with buckdrill in it. Uh, and phenoxaprop, uh, and um, that does a pretty good job at two, uh, 27 uh, ounces or a little more on taking out some of the grasses and that kind of stuff. And probably the reason I'm really kind of struggling up here a little bit because these fields are terrible clean. There's not a lot to show you as far as, uh, you know, there's not a lot of differences in any of the product or any of the things that we're showing here. So, but you can pretty much look at it. Uh, this did a really good job. We had a really good year as far as getting some control. So probably one of the things we look at is, you know, what, what's the cost of the individual products and that kind of stuff. So that's probably the thing might drive this, uh, this discussion a little more if we had some uh, discussion as far as, you know, what's going to cost you to do this. So um, one thing to uh, place you could kind of find that information is in our weed control guides. Uh, Daryl Danicky, if you want to just stand up for a second, Daryl, and just show them a copy of what we're talking about. Uh, we do have some at the barn or shed. Uh, they are uh, free, and they are uh, also a uh, not just a herbicide guide, but they're a crop protection guide. So they have both fungicides uh, and also um, our insecticides and uh, in addition to the herbicides. So feel free to help you out. We try to make some estimates on costs in, in, uh, uh, in that particular uh, weed guide. And I think that, uh, you know, that'd be a good place to start if you're looking at it. But like I said, kind of hard to really show you a lot here because it's awful clean things. Uh, you know, Jill and, and Dave did too good a job killing our weeds for us. So, so you might, are you guys higher out? Okay. Okay, one more stop on the weed side. To pull up, pull up. So we got the. I'll just start on this end and go this way. Okay, what we've got here uh, are some products that, again, will be on the market in the near future. Uh, they're not available yet, but they are in our trials this year, just to give you an idea of what they do. And uh, our check here, um, again, has quite a bit of mustard. You can dig some buckwheat out of there and that kind of thing. So uh, basically broad leaves are kind of the thing that we really want to stress or at least look at what these different uh, two different chemistries we're going to look at here can do. The first one is uh, uh, carnivore and carnivore is MCPA, bronate and starane so it's got quite a bit of broadleaf uh, should do a pretty good job on us. We put a uh, the adjuvant or uh, master lock is uh, actually a, a modified vegetable oil uh, it's a Winfield product um, just basically a good way to carry the product and that kind of thing just to examine with it but as you can see here carnivore uh, if you look just you know at, at what you can see from the canopy and down into the uh, actual grain itself you know pretty clean don't see a lot of broad leaves sticking out of that canopy uh, carnivore again only this time we've uh, put interlock in it and interlock actually is a deposit aid uh, deposition aid I guess is the right word to use 
uh, and also a drift control agent uh, takes uh, you know gives a little more safety to that because if you look at the three products that are tank mix there you know we do have some drift potential in those in certain settings that kind of stuff but you can see again uh, we got um, carnivore uh, just by itself uh, not a lot of difference as you can see right now between those three different uh, types of settings or different uh, treatment uh, and then on the end here a product uh, it's called well uh, yeah weld and what that is is stinger starry and an mcpa so just a slight variation on you know, what they're using in there same kind of deal just some variations on you know how we're applying it with some different uh, adjuvants and that kind of stuff but if you look at the if you just kind of back up and look at those products uh, pretty much the same uh, looks like we pretty got had pretty good control uh, hopefully maybe another year of demonstrating this we might see something a little different we can pick out there again we might have to look at prices maybe the issue as far as you know whether we use this kind of product or not um, so basically uh, we'll be probably talking more about it but these are a couple of new products that you might see on the wheat market uh, in the near future so uh, okay uh, this particular stop is going to look at uh, grass control uh, in spring wheat uh, as you can see we've got some check is pretty well filled up with a number of different uh, weeds that we could pick out of there we could volunteer sunflowers uh, some mustard but we also got some wild oats that are moving through there so we've got a good variety of different problems but really this one we're looking at seeing if there's any any particular uh, wild oats uh, that we might uh, pick up if we walk through here uh, first one out uh, past the check is rimfire and that's at three ounces with husky mixed in at 11 ounces and these are all post treatments um, uh, our rim fire of course is uh, Olympus and our Silverado and as you look at that one uh, we really again don't pick up a lot of different uh, problems or the grass kind of cleared up as far as uh, um, you know any particular wild oats or anything that we might look at so not a lot of things that we can really look at uh, and pull out of that one now we also uh, went with uh, rim fire and about the same treatment only we threw quad 7 in which is more of a, a surfactant that we might use on it give a little more stick to it um, doesn't look like we've got too much going on as far as any other particular problems that we're picking up with it um, the quad uh, 7 I guess at this versus the uh, MSO didn't really seem to make a tremendous difference in what we're looking at in here uh, so both of them seem to be have a pretty even comparison um, we do uh, have Wolverine in here on our third trial uh, this is 27.4 ounces uh, again in a post and it was applied when I didn't get that written down Daryl do you remember when this or Dave when this was done was this 13th later okay um, we got some Wolverine at the at the rate 27.4 ounces um, one of the things you know we can we can't really po point out any grass uh, volunteer or weedy grasses when we're picking this up one but this is one of the ones where we want to watch especially in the year like this if we're using it <clears throat> and we do get into some humid periods and we're starting to think about fungicides this is one of the ones that we can have some antagonism with so this is one where if we're going to use Wolverine Make sure you do kind of check through um, and if we're going to use a fungicide make sure that you're kind of paying attention to that one can cause a little bit of uh, stress within the within the crop sometimes some yellowing leaves and that kind of stuff um, husky uh, is our next one down here husky complete uh, a good grass herbicide um, probably also a little stronger if we have some perennial problems in some of these uh, some of our fields and that kind of stuff that we'd probably maybe look at using that one this does have some ammonium sulfate uh, added in has a, a additive to it um, and our last one we kind of ran a little longer but uh, axial star uh, this again axial would take care of your or your grasses and also it has starane in it uh, or the same ingredient as starane in it and that would take out the broadleaf so it gives you kind of a broader control if you've got some of those issues like you'd see over here that you need to take some of those problems out so so that might be you know something uh, if you need uh, something for that particular deal but it's kind of hard again uh, really good control on some of these uh, spots that we're looking at uh, probably again we want to look at you know the cost of those uh, applications in order to really 
get a good handle on maybe what we want to do out there. Um, somebody mentioned something about carryover. I guess, you know, that was the other thing. Uh, shouldn't probably just say you can just go ahead and uh, not think about, you know, management of it because there are some issues where you might have to look at some carryover issues again. Going down to each one of those and, and picking those out would be important in order to avoid that particular issue for the next year. Any questions on this particular project? What we're going to look at for the next few minutes uh, is uh, laying down some kind of uh, foundation for the issue of putting soybeans, uh, especially if we're uh, facing the issue of uh, Roundup resistance, or I should say glyphosate resistance, and trying to combat and work with some of the uh, pre-emerges and use them as a way to maybe take some of those problems out ahead of time. Uh, you know, timing is pretty critical on keeping some of those uh, particular problems to a minimum. As you can see here from the check, we've got quite a bit of grass pressure. So, you know, the grass herbicides are pretty vital in this setting. We've also got some broadleaves running through, uh, lamb's quarter, uh, some mustard and that kind of thing. So it's a pretty dirty field. Uh, so our, the basic thing we're trying to do is uh, lay down something uh, with the crop in a pre-emerge type setting. Uh, this happens to be uh, soybeans that were sprayed on June the 6th as a part of a pre. And the red color that you read on here, that, that's the chemical that was used as a pre-emergence. The green print is post-emerge. Uh, if you see a star by it, it's early post. If it's just plain uh, you know, green, Without a star on it, then it's just a regular post-emerge application. Um, let's see. Okay, the early posts in this case were made. Uh, the pre's were laid down in the sixth. The early posts were made on June 25th, and then the uh, normal posts uh, were laid down July 2nd. Okay. And as you can see, we walk through here. Uh, we've got some product. Uh, Fierce was our um, uh, pre-emerge product, uh, three ounces. And that is a tank or a premix of Valor and Zudia, Zuda, Zudia, Zidua. I always have problems getting that one out, but that's a BSF product, uh, Zidua tank mix. And then we did three ounces of that, and then we came back with uh, a later date. We went first rate Harmony Select Max and some non iactic surfactant. Um, you know, we did a pretty fair job on most of. Uh, uh, what's out there the grass probably peeking through a little more than we'd want in this setting than we got but we did get some you know some we did get some decent control for first uh hopefully those beans will hurry up and grow up and we'll get some canopy out here that we can take uh, some of that out but but we definitely uh you know have some we definitely knocked it back from the check sonic uh at seven ounces uh doll product um we had some pretty good burn down the way it looks and then we came back uh, we put in Flexstar, which is kind of the one we're talking about. You know, if we get uh, some Roundup resistance issues, Flexstar seems to be the one we're kind of looking at leaning on a little more as far as getting some of those, uh, getting that issue corralled in a little better in our soybeans. And then we put 12 ounces of Select Max and some crop oil out there too. So you can see that we probably got, you know, when we came back in versus these two treatments, we probably got a little better burn down on that second on that uh, post past uh, as far as getting those uh, those grasses fried up and that kind of stuff not uh, you know as clean as we'd want it to be but maybe you know we can like i said hopefully get uh, you know keep it back and keep that competition to a minimum let those beans get uh, get uh, growing uh, sequence uh, that is a dual and uh, uh, glyphosate product that we can put down at two and a half pints here for, for the acre. And then we also got some Flexstar uh, later on at 2.7 pints and then some ammonium sulfate put on with it. So, so you can see we've got some little more burn down coming here, a uh, little you know, more activity as far as keeping, the, keeping that grass and some of those problems to a minimum. Okay, Dave. This is Prefex, that's uh, two pints. Uh, we got touchdown at 32 ounces, so uh, the follow-up treatment. Uh, boundary at a pint and a half, we got Flexstar in here. Both those look pretty clean, don't they? Put a nice job of getting the grass out of those uh, with that particular products. And then we uh, kind of move over here 
into some of our areas where we probably had some pretty good grass pressure. You can see quite a bit of carcasses still out there in those fields. Uh, we've got Sonic, uh, the next one with Durango as our uh, glyphosate uh, uh, burn down or, or uh, treatment after uh, some soybeans have emerged. And we have some pretty good control. You know, we've got some little green peeking up here again, but if we can get those beans growing up uh, ahead of anything that's recovering, uh, we, we hopefully will be just fine with that treatment. Sonic, uh, four and a half ounces. Again, we're using uh, Sonic at a different rate here and going back in with, uh, with our Durango as our burn uh, off as far as uh, our Roundup uh, or glyphosate treatment. Um, Authority, uh, MTZ. This happens to be a FMC product and this has uh, got some uh, Sencor in it, the old Sencor. Uh, Metribuzin is the chemical that we're in there. Coming back in with 22 ounces of Weathermax. Uh, most of these, as we walk through here, you know, we I think we see a pretty good uh, burn down, pretty good control on the grasses. Uh, we had quite a bit of competition, but it looks like we're all right as far as any retreatments and that kind of stuff. Um, Gangster, just a couple of uh, um, just to explain this sign here. We actually had Gangster uh, V and or five, and we had uh, Gangster uh, FR. Against your V, and we had two different rates. Uh, actually, you know, with, we just split those products. They're not; they don't have to be applied separately like that. We can get fine form uh, Gangster where we can actually just use it once. Uh, just happened to be the way the formulation worked out for uh, just to test and see what it would look like and that kind of stuff. Uh, mainly putting the Gangster in for broadleaves, um, then the Weathermax, of course, the glyphosate. We come back in and get the grass later on. So the next one uh, that we've got here is a standalone. Uh, this you know, doesn't have any tank mix. It's just Valor. Uh, it's a Winfield product. Uh, we come back in with a Weathermax, uh, ammonium sulfate later on. But you can see in most of these treatments that we're looking at, uh, we're really kind of seeing pretty much the same kind of results. It's pretty clean, uh, we've got pr pretty good grass control. Um, we've got uh, basically uh, the next several that we're looking at uh, are going to be uh, you know, kind of the same lookalikes as far as uh, control and those kind of things. Um, probably not a lot of comment on them that they can make uh, that would. Um, make much difference in any of them. Again, probably a pricing thing is what we're going to look at. <clears throat> the next three that we, or four actually, that we're going to look at here uh, the run up to the check actually these are our early posts that we talked about uh, so these would be put on you know further ahead um, these were put on june 25th and so we can see uh, we've got anthem in here and anthem is zudua and uh, cadet um, so that really uh, kind of shows that you know we get some pretty decent control uh, with these early posts uh, warrant at two and a half pints. Uh, we've got uh, Weatherman. Oh, actually, I'm going to stop right there. Got warrant with Weatherman applied later. So these are kind of our two that are really our earlier ones. These ones on the very end are actually just Weathermax alone. And this is a single pass of Weathermax, uh, an early post, just 22 ounces. And then over here, we've got a, we've actually done a, two applications of 22 ounces each time. Uh, so we can uh, so that you know this extra was early post and then came back in again just a week or so later and cleaned it up with that. So you can see you know what that uh, what what potentially do. We've got some pretty good treatments here that can take out you know pretty much leave us in pretty good shape. Um, the next bunch that we have over here past this next check. This is all Liberty Link uh, type systems. Um, as you can see, how many of you ever have had any dealings with Liberty Link or any experience? You, did you were pleased with the results or decided to do different? What's that? They weren't good last year. 
work good last year, that's good. And that's, uh, you know, I mean, we like to see those systems work. Uh, one of the things that you hear about it is it seems sometimes these aren't as consistent as your Roundup, uh, but you know, they are available, we can use them. So you can see here, we've got uh, uh, different rates of, uh, of our pre-emerges that you put down, some of the ones that we walked through just a little bit ago, uh, some Valor here, Authority and Fierce right there. Uh, then we followed up with uh, about the, uh, the 29 ounces of Liberty. And uh, we, you know, we have fairly good control uh, not bad. There's, you know, maybe a little bit. Uh, uh, we like to see a little uh, more brown showing up in there, uh, but you know those systems can work well. Um, again, the consistency issue is the kind of thing that we end up uh, having to wrestle with when we get into there. Um, we've got some other uh, early post treatments up here. Uh, the next three, again, you know, they were applied on that June 25th date, and then a follow-up treatment of Liberty Link. Uh, probably show a little more, a little cleaner beans up here with this system uh, than we did back here with these uh, pre-emerge systems. So maybe we can kind of say, you know, maybe those early posts might be something we really want to take a look at uh, for using these kind of systems. It, it sure looks like, uh, you know, that, that kind of, there's kind of a little difference between the two. Uh, but again, uh, from year to year that can change and we can have some different, uh, have some different looks as far as uh, the system are concerned. So I think one of the things that, you know, we have to recognize as far as produce, uh, producers and uh, egg business folks and that kind of stuff is that the resistance issue is out there and it, uh, you know, is something we're going to have to wrestle with here now for hopefully we can, uh, you know, get some good management techniques down. One thing I will pass on to you, um, I did have uh, some folks talk about, uh, you know, the issue of resistance and some of the comments I heard was, you know, the Dakotas actually had a pretty good track record as far as, you know, being ones that can kind of keep that resistance issue down because they took the issue seriously, you know, didn't try to cut rates or <clears throat> try to cheat on things. So kind of idea to keep that in mind uh, that, you know, the management thing will be, be big for the next, uh, you know, as long as we're dealing with this issue of resistance. And so anyway, these are some systems that you might look at as far as um, being able to handle that. Well, this particular uh is the uh, the corn demo, and we're actually doing it backwards. This is the uh, the end of the plot, so uh, kind of be talking about some things as we go along the line, uh, kind of in a, in a little uh, backwards uh, uh, fashion from the way it was originally laid out. Um, like Mark said, a lot of the things that we're looking at here, uh, looking at a foundation uh, with pre's uh, on top of some of the glyphosate programs, and and mainly looking at some resistance management type of things. Uh, those pre's uh, really worked pretty good in most cases. We were down to Beersford last night, and they really worked uh, worked well down there. And uh, and really, a lot of the growers we talked to there said that they had a lot of good luck with the uh, with their pre's if they got them on. And that was kind of the dilemma, of course, was just getting you know getting them on. So what we're going to do, we'll look at some standard uh, programs, a uh, little couple new chemistries along the line here, but kind of talk about uh, some combinations of things that are going on. Uh, with a number of these. Uh, of course, here we got the, uh, the uh, two-pass uh, glyphosate program um, in uh, the, the uh, uh, early uh, post and the later post. Uh, for this particular one, the weed pressure we got up here, you can kind of see behind me, we've got uh, in this block right through here, we had a lot of Canada thistle that came up for whatever reason. Uh, anything that we can use that we were knocking the, uh, the thistle out really helped uh, come along the way. Uh, we got lamb's quarter up in this end. We got some buckwheat and so on. Uh, so uh, that that found early foundation program kind of helped a lot of a lot of these uh, uh, broadleaf, uh, uh, com, uh, small seeded broadleaves that we have come up here. So this is basically the two pass program. Uh, particularly here in the corn, uh, soybeans are a little more forgiving, but we particularly if we got grass pressure, uh, that's really going to affect uh, that early uh, performance of the corn. So. Uh, if that first pass uh, didn't get it, then we definitely are uh, kind of depending on that second pass. And if we have a resistance issue with a water amp uh, or something, uh, those type of things, we have to rely on another chemistry. So kind of looking through here, uh, again, uh, the plots are real clean, so a little harder to talk about some individual weeds that may be cropping up. But uh, as we kind of go along, uh, We'll go through it here fairly quickly uh, so we can get back up to the shed. But uh, 
just kind of looking at the, the two programs here, you know, very common. You've seen these out here, the single pass and two pass programs. And in this situation, uh, we did uh, probably a good example with the, uh, with the Canada Thistle. Uh, one pass program, we heard it, uh, suppressed it some, but uh, we actually knocked that thistle back a little bit more with that two pass program here. So in this case, uh, in this situation, uh, uh, that two pass program really in the long run is probably going to pay and it. Hopefully it'll help us uh, take care of the problem here later on down the road. Uh, early posts here. Uh, well, obviously we got, we got, the, uh, got the stacked uh, uh, seed here. We got uh, Liberty, we got Caprino uh, along with, uh, with the Atrazine in an uh, early post uh, uh, program. Nothing in there that's probably going to do a real tremendous job on the Canada thistle. And if you look through there, it didn't. So, uh, but that's that's uh, kind of a combination of things. And one of the things you'll notice, and uh, really a lot of things being put into some of these tank mixes as as we're going through. Um, so these this end of it, we're actually looking at at total post programs. Anthem. With our Power Max in a early post, Anthem, of course, of course is Zidua and Cadet. Zidua, uh, you know, that's being put into a lot of different tank mixes. And I guess, quite frankly, I've been pretty impressed with, with what Zidua has been doing out there uh, as far as uh, a lot of the programs, the tank mixes that we've been using, uh, using that on. Uh, Warrant with Impact. Uh, and, and then we've got our glyphosate and, and atrazine in that uh, in a total post program early post uh, warrant of course is a is a Winfield's acetochlor uh, using that in the mix sure start uh, a lot of sure start went out uh, this year this is an early post uh, with in this case Durango is our our glyphosate that we're using uh, sure start uh, is your acetochlor uh, python and stinger and uh, you know, here's another one for what the weed uh, 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 spectrum that we were lose, uh, using here. That stinger should have helped again the thistle along, did it? Didn't do too bad, did it? So that was one thing. So kind of assessing those weed problems as you go through uh, and seeing what, what it's going to do for you. Um, we got Balance Flex down here with Liberty. Balance Flex, and we're starting to prease here. Uh, with the uh, 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 balance flex is the pre and then liberty and atrazine as a post and then down here we've got the verdict which is a verdict outlook and and, st and uh, status and uh, and then we're looking uh, or our sharpening I mean and then status uh, using status in the roundup then as our uh, as our uh, uh, post emerge application so again, kind of combining some of these different things as we go through. I mentioned the Zidua before. In this case, using the Zidua alone as our, as our foundation and then coming back with the uh, glyphosate and status. Status, another one of those things that we're looking at as far as a, a resistant management uh, uh, component if we've got some problems with the resistant water hemp or or uh, ragweed or one of those type of things uh, cinch over here in that realm Q realm Q uh, saw that earlier over in the soybeans realm Q resolve uh, which is rim, uh, rim sulfuron if you remember that back in the uh, the early corn uh, herbicide days there when we were uh, doing some of the the rim uh, uh, and some of those early uh, issues and so on that uh, rim sulfuron and grass herbicide uh, using that with uh, uh, mesotrione or Callisto over here uh, as the uh, uh, the pre and then or uh, cinch and atrazine is the pre and then realm Q then is the post along with uh, with the uh, abundant extra and that one is is the glyphosate uh, in that mix. Harness uh, and is the uh, as your foundation on that one down is your pre uh, along with power max and atrazine this has got the atrazine in the uh, uh, in the uh, in the post part of the program I guess I've always kind of liked the uh, the harness with the atrazine uh, as a pre and then coming back with the 
uh, the the uh, glyphosate in the uh, in the post emerge but just kind of a little different angle on that one uh, here we got harness extra and again impact uh, power max and atrazine then uh, as our uh, post emerge uh, for the uh, for the uh, uh, post emerge application with that dual tube magnum and halix uh, GT uh, uh, GT um, kind of looking down through that we're starting to look at uh, you know we're starting to miss a few things here and there on that if you look in there uh, probably going to pick up some of the grass is probably crispy enough but definitely the buckwheat uh, kind of coming through uh, on this particular one as we look at this one uh, along the line now if we go to the bicep light two in the magnum along with the as the pre and in the halix gt uh, then we're picking up the the buckwheat uh, on that particular mix Lumax EZ, that's your uh, metallochlor, your uh, mesotrione, and your atrazine, or basically a dual Callisto atrazine. And then Halix, uh, metallochlor, glyphosate, and, and Callisto. So you're getting uh, both some components in both the pre uh, and the post, uh, not relying on, the, uh, on just the glyphosate to carry that. Uh, picked up, uh, kind of hit that, uh, the, uh, uh, the Canda thistle a little bit, backed her off anyway. Uh, on that one. Sure start, we saw that before um, and put that down as the pre-emerged Durango's our glyphosate uh, in that one. Uh, again that's starting to, that's picking it up in pretty good shape as we come through. Then we got for the pre-emerge on the next one here is the Corvus atrazine and then Laudus and atrazine in our uh, as our post-emerge uh, application. And again, we're, we're not hitting the, the Acanda thistle on that one as much, of course. And if you look through, there's a little bit of buckwheat in, in that one as well. Keystone LA and Hornet is our pre-emerge and the, uh, the one we have up uh, on this end to start it out with, actually at the beginning of the plot. And then again, Durango uh, and uh, DMA is our, our glyphosate uh, post-emerge application. And if you're kind of wondering what kind of weed pressure we actually did have up here, because actually, by and large, it's pretty clean uh, uh, all the way down. We do have a little bit of wild oat up here. We've got the Canda thistle, and if you go through there, uh, actually, the Canda, between the Canda thistle and the wild oat, that's probably keeping the lamb's quarter and the buckwheat down in that plot. <laughs> Seeing how I work IPM, that's my IPM approach here. <laughs> So anyway, you can see what that early weed pressure has done to that corn uh, in, the, in the check. And that's why the check's really the, the real important part of any of these studies that we look at and back uh, through comparisons. Because then we can look back and, and, uh, and uh, see that we've uh, kind of what we're doing there. Uh, well, Zidua, let's see, would be a good explanation for that one. Uh, it, Zidua is a, a broadleaf, uh, kind of, uh, uh, small seeded broadleaf type of thing, works good uh, for a number of those uh, pre's. It seems to be um, one of those that works well when you're uh, putting it with other products uh, to, to put it as a, a tank mix type of thing. It's the way it's kind of being marketed. Uh, I guess I'd look at it as a, I kind of liked it from what I've seen as, as a, as a pre-emergence uh, broadleaf uh, component to put in uh, just to strengthen and broaden the, uh, the uh, window of what we're looking at. It just kind of gives it that extra kick. Is that going to be a, it's not a standalone? Well, it's not necessarily a standalone, but we've had to, on, on uh, uh, some of the plots where it's been in, in uh, just as a pre, no, we probably could come back with something else. But it's looked pretty strong on, on a lot of different plots. Any other questions along those lines? Do you harvest this to compare the yields? This one will run. Uh, this is a demo. Uh, normally we don't, because, but it is actually uh, uh, set up in four replications. So they'll go through. We'll get yields on it. 
Uh, but if the, on a demo plot, sometimes you know the yields are a little hard to you know justify because they're they're 10 foot uh, wide and, and 50 foot long. Uh, so we'll we'll get some data on them, but we don't use that the yield data you know a lot on those.